From the loss of direction to all the changes Season 4 will have to make, let's discuss why Netflix's Outer Banks Season 3 was not good. Dad, yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. listen. Did you hear that? Starting with how Outer Banks is a show that's just as lost as the characters in it. After they find their way back, the story's still all over the place, with a lot going on but not much that seems to matter. This is most obvious at the beginning of the show when one of the main bad guys decides not to go after the thieves who are getting away. His explanation isn't very good, and it sounds like he's tired of how everything's going as well. It makes for an unintentionally funny moment where the characters look like they can hardly be bothered to go through the motions. We gotta get up there before moonrise. If we miss the solstice, then all this was for nothing. So listen, Sarah, I'm telling you right now, you fall behind, I ain't waiting. Dad. All of these motions start with the group of Pogues being stuck on a deserted island. At first, it feels like the second season of The Wilds, which was a disaster, but somehow it gets worse. I'm talking about the awkward fight on the plane. After the explosive end of last season, the group of scrappy young people have made a simple life for themselves on the island, which they call Poglandia. Things aren't too bad because they can sit back and relax while living on fish they catch. All of this is then thrown away when they call a seaplane. They all get on board, thinking they're being saved, but soon start to wonder who the pilot might be working for. A cartoonish fight breaks out on the plane before it crashes, but everyone's physically fine if a little shaken up. It's got an awkward start that's meant to hook us for the rest of the season, but it turns out to be a good thing because nothing else in season 3 is ever fun either. The cast tries hard to save the season, but it's a losing battle from the beginning to the end. What do we got, old man? I... I have no tongue, but I'm Take the problematic resurrection of Big John as an example. We find out that he wasn't really dead at the end of season two, which was one of the worst things about this season. The first time John B. and Big John see each other again, it's nice, but Big John's a questionable person. He goes against the vibe of the show in every way. He even leads John B. in the wrong direction every second he is on screen, especially since he ends up separating John B. from his friends for half the season. That's not the only thing that people didn't like about the show, though. You think we're gonna have enough time? Time to make it to Solana for the solstice. Yeah, but I wasn't too cocky. I still can't make out those glyphs. Okay, I might have something that might help us. There's also the way the plot was just too much. The rest of the show is just drama for drama's sake. And to be honest, it's getting a little old that the show lets no one win for more than two seconds. Relationships break up for reasons that are impossible to understand. The Camerons have stopped treasure hunters a million times, and they do it again. The old villain, Ward Cameron, has been taken out of the game and replaced by Carlos Singh and his huge group of mercenaries who aren't as interesting. This game's become a lot like Uncharted because of this. There are some particularly hard to believe moments in the show, like they go through this crazy and admittedly exciting train heist where the teens ride the rails and pull out crates that might have priceless relics on them and throw them in the back of trucks while the police chase them at high speeds. Orinoco, right? And they say up here, El Dorado. Wait, who says? All the world. As if that wasn't unbelievable enough, JJ almost dies when he and his motorbike crash through the cement wall of an overpass, only to find out that the crate's full of junk. Rafe's already stolen the cross, so he can melt down that priceless relic to feed his daddy issues. Sorry, I meant to make money. Nothing good came out of that. A dead end. So, let me ask you, what? But that's not the only strange thing going on. There's more trouble involving Big John. Our old creepy friend, Carla Limbry, calls Big John because she's still waiting for him to bring her the healing shroud she's been looking for all season. Even though this show could be a guilty pleasure based on the fact that it's got attractive actors doing soapy things, even that's starting to get old. Well, welcome to El Tesoro, Bird. We'll hold up here for the night. Move out of first line. The new thing that Season 3 tries to build on is the search for El Dorado. This could be just ridiculous enough of a goal to hold together the overly serious parts. But, alas, that's not the case, and all of the lines that try to be self-aware and point out the absurdest parts fall flat. I'm going to sell a cross that I found, okay, that I saved, and when Dad wakes up, okay. he's going to see that I took care of it, not you. 
When you're told a story about a test that must be passed, and one of the characters says that there's always something in the way of getting what they want, they could have been talking about the path of the show. The more it goes on, the more it skirts around the main plot. It wasn't just that the show was bad because of the plot. There were also many editing mistakes. People were quick to point out a few mistakes in response to a scene from the second episode. And I think it's important, very important, that we honor tradition. A social media user pointed out that Kiara and Rafe's stunt doubles showed up during an action-packed moment. Later, the same commenter posted a clip of Pope and Cleo getting on a motorcycle, but a shot taken from above showed that Davis's stunt double looked like her because her hair was different. When Kiara and JJ are seen riding away from her house on a bike, a second viewer also noticed an on-camera switch. The darker hair on the back of JJ's head made it look for a moment like he isn't Panko, who is 24 years old. Don't get us wrong, it was mostly a fun ride ride, but it's not working as well as it used to. Why don't we call my parents? And say what, Pope? And say we're alive. I haven't seen my family in I don't know how long. They're probably worried sick about me. And since season four is on the way, the show really needs a change. That doesn't mean I want any of the pokes to get hurt, but if the show insists on giving shootouts and explosions instead of character development, the stakes must be high enough to keep things interesting. The best thing about the show is the Pogues, and how well the actors who play them get along. So I hope that the writers of season 4 will remember this, and give up at least some of the action for the Pogue drama that made me love the show in the first place. It's also time to change the formula, and stop using the same ideas over and over again. No more kidnappings, pointless car chases, almost getting the gold, or dead dads who aren't really dead. Talking about dead dads, the show needs to fix its death problem. In the season 3 finale, Ward may have finally met at his end, but only after escaping death not once, not twice, but three times. You also met John B's not dead dad this season, because it turns out that both his and Sarah's dads could have faked their own deaths. If season four tries to do this with JJ's dad, who hasn't been in any of the most recent episodes, I worry that the show will be over for good. Again, thank you both for coming. I know it was a long way to travel, but I think what we have is is pretty worthwhile. Yes, well, Michel is the most prominent antiquities dealer of the West Indies. There's still a way for them to redeem the show, though. The characters will have to take a fresh approach to the treasure hunt, even though the Pogues find El Dorado and start living like kooks. At the end of the season three, an older man comes up to them and gives them yet another mission. The mission is to find the lost treasure of the notorious pirate Blackbeard. With the Pogues' newfound wealth and resources, the search for Blackbeard's treasure could be a whole new ball game. But only if this three-season old formula has turned on its head and the pointless, drawn-out plots are thrown out. That's all for why Netflix's Outer Banks Season 3 is not good 